Next up is Philip Kobernick. He's the Logistics Services Manager at Alameda County Government. And he's going to tell us how his agency is using an innovative program to reduce employee parking demand. This is Philip's second year uh, speaking at CommuteCon, I believe. So welcome back to the CommuteCon stage, Philip. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's always a pleasure. I'm very happy to be working with Ride Amigos on CommuteCon 2019. So um, I oversee our transportation and logistics program here at Alameda County, um, which includes our vehicle fleet and our kind of internal parking programs. And I'm going to be talking about a pilot program that we're running to bring uh, parking cash out for our government employees here. Um, full disclosure, uh, we're in pre-implementation, so I can't talk about kind of juicy numbers on how we did yet, hopefully next year. But I do want to talk about the concept and the partnership with Ride Amigos that we're doing on this and um, hopefully contribute to the conversation. And uh, maybe some folks will have some uh, interesting takeaways on things that they can apply to their program. And I think especially for university um, and uh, kind of government employers who also have public parking, um, I think this could be potentially of interest. All right, so quick about us for Alameda County. If you're unfamiliar, we're on the San Francisco Bay Area in the East Bay. Um, we are a huge employer. So we have over 9,500 employees, closer to 10,000 actually, um, 200 different offices. Um, and when we do our internal GHG inventory for our operations, basically what's our climate change impact for delivering the government services that we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, commuting is our biggest single contributor, um, about 38% uh, of our total emissions. And here's a picture of all of our offices across the, uh, across the East Bay. Okay, so um, we do a lot with our TDM program. Um, we have BART connecting shuttles. We have, uh, BART's our regional transportation here in the Bay Area. We have um, incentives for carpooling. We have put some resources into bike infrastructure to make sure that our offices are accessible on a bike and that employees and visitors have safe spaces to keep their bikes. Um, but there's kind of a larger audience that we haven't really cracked into that we really wanted to try to get into, and that's um, our regular permit holders. So we oversee over 2,000 parking spaces that we directly manage. Um, and this kind of allows us an opportunity to really kind of crack into this audience a little bit more by providing incentives that are directly kind of tailored to that audience. And so uh, another big contributor or uh, motivator for this is that we've been having a relatively flat drive alone rate over the last couple of years. And so we want to be thinking about ways to kind of move the needle on that uh, with folks that are regular drivers. So uh, we're starting with our downtown Oakland garage, um, which is a picture uh, on the right here from when it was opened in the in the 60s. Um, so we're looking at this garage to get started with. Um, it's a 700 uh, 700 car capacity um, spur, which is a regional organization here in the Bay Area, called it a mid-century bombast, which I think is hilarious and definitely true. Um, in this garage, there's 500 regular permit holders, which is the target of our cash-out pilot. And we also sell up to 200 spaces just open to the public because there's a court nearby and there's folks that come in for jury duty uh, and just general kind of parking needs in the area. And demand far exceeds supply uh, for this garage. So for that permit holder, um, the group of employees that, are, that hold permits there, there's over a seven-year wait list uh, to get a parking permit at this garage. Uh, so huge, huge demand there. And then for the 200 public spaces that we sell every day, um, it sells out within an hour of when the garage opens at 7 a.m. So lots and lots of demand here. Um, and another challenge for our program that we're trying to um, try to move the, where the incentives lie is that we have a monthly permit. So there's obviously a sunk cost problem. When employees pay for a month of parking all up, up front, um, there's really very little incentive for them to also pay for transit because they've already paid for parking regardless of how often they use it. So that's something that we really wanted to, to tinker with with this program as well. So here are some of the design considerations that we uh, put into development of this program. Um, so we're a government agency. We don't have a ton of money to put into our commuter program. Um, unfortunately, we can't do direct kind of cash incentives um, like other companies might be able to do. There's a lot of public rules around things like that. So we kind of need to come up with a way that fit into the paradigm that we're operating in as a government employee. So at minimum, it had to be cost neutral. and 
potential for cost positive that we can reinvest into our program. It was a major design consideration. Um, as I mentioned before, employees wait seven years for their um, parking permit at this garage. So we don't want to screw with their perception of that. <laughs> if they feel like they're at risk of giving that up or in any way, you know, I don't think that's going to be a successful program. So employees are allowed to retain their permits. We're not asking them to give it up. So that's a big design consideration. And an opportunity is that price differential that we have between what employees pay for parking and what the general public pays for parking. So our employees pay an extremely low rate um, that's pulled out of their paychecks to, to pay for parking on a pre-tax basis. And the general public spaces we do that we sell to the public are at double that rate, um, plus a little bit more actually. So there's a, there's a big cost differential that we could potentially utilize to help make this program actually kind of financially attractive to us too. So how does it work? So um, we partnered with Ride Amigos to help develop this for us, and it's integrated with the, our whole online TDM platform um, that they also have, which is the picture on the right here. And so the way it works is that for the 500 employees who have permits, we're asking them to opt out of parking, um, and they can do it for days in advance if they know that they are gonna start working from home every Friday, they can just start clicking every Friday, um, and it has to be done before 7 a.m. And the, the reason we do that is because we want to open the garage and basically know how many of our employees are not coming to work um, so we can resell those spots at a public rate. So the benefit for the employees is that instead of just having this sunk cost and paying for a month of parking, um, we're going to give you the daily rate back. Um, we're basically going to refund you, essentially is how this was working, um, on days that you don't drive to work. And ideally, that's opening up the opportunity for people to take transit, work from home more, and do other things um, by kind of cracking into that sunk cost problem. Um, the employees who are participating um, will accrue their value on a quarterly basis. And we did that so it was more noticeable on their paycheck. We kind of let it grow for a little bit. And then we refund them on a quarterly basis. And so like I mentioned before, our parking program at the beginning of the day will know how many employees are not coming to work. And then we're going to let more people in um, from the public. And this is what it looks like. So it, we kind of use it as a calendar interface, and this is in beta, so we still may change this a little bit. Um, but employees log in, and they say, you know what, um, I'm going to try biking all week next week. It's going to be, you know, a new thing. I'm going to try it out. And so they go select the days that they're going to um, not drive to work, basically. And we we kind of include the whole universe of not driving to work in this in this program. So they could be carpooling with someone else. They could be working from home. They could just be off. Um, they could be biking, transit, whatever, uh, whatever's not driving in, uh, and they, they select that. And then on days that we verify that they didn't come in, um, they will automatically get rewarded. We're using um, badge reader data integration to do our verification. So if someone says that they didn't, well, that they weren't going to come in, but they end up due, we'll recognize a badge hit and then just kind of override that. That's how that system works. Um, another really critical part of this is working with our parking contractors, uh, the folks who are on the ground who are selling tickets and working with parkers. So um, Ride Amigos developed a, uh, a screen for them, like basically like a module for them in the beginning of the day to know that uh, the number of public spaces available for folks to come in um, changes day to day. And so today, uh, I just did a screen grab because we're not live yet. But on days where, you know, let's say 100 people are opting out um, of our 500 group, that number will go from 200 to 300, and they'll, they'll know that way. So um, working with our parking contractors and making it easy for them was a real, real important part for, for this. And like I said before, um, we're doing this quarterly. So our employees will hopefully notice, you know, every, um, every I think six pay periods, um, that, wow, you know, I have 300 extra dollars in my paycheck or whatever that I wasn't expecting. So we want it to be noticeable um, in their paycheck. And we're also going to be giving them targeted communications um, right before that paycheck day where they're going to get it saying, hey, check, check for your clean commute credit or clean commute bonus um, on your next paycheck. And hopefully use this as a way to more financially incentivize a group of folks that had not had this incentive before. I think that's my final slide. Yeah. That is my final slide. So thank you again, and thanks to Ride Amigos for, uh, for having me again. Much appreciated.